after Jesus had spoken, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come to glorify your Son so that your Son may glorify you since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, that they have, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me, I have given to them. And they have received them and know the truth that I came from you. And they believed that you had sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I'm not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have glorified, been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. This is the gospel of the risen Christ. Thanks be to God. I am Pastrix Carmen and I am driving the camera crew crazy right now because I'm walking around and they don't know where I'm going to end up. Right here in the center today, guys. I might wander a little bit. So, Happy Easter, everyone. Yes, this is the seventh Sunday and the last Sunday of Easter because next Sunday we celebrate Pentecost. The, well, one of my favorite Sundays in the church. We celebrate the birthday of the church when the Holy Spirit came down like tongues of fire on the heads of the people present. It's the day that we received the great counselor, the paraclete, as we heard last week, the advocate, the spirit of truth. I love the Holy Spirit. I think I've done a sermon here before when I said that the Holy Spirit was the Thelma to my Louise. The Holy Spirit is my ride or die. My, the Holy Spirit is my ever-present companion that's with me in times of joy, in times of sorrow, in times of distress. But yes, the Holy Spirit is my ride or die. You know, when Jesus departed the earth, he said that this was for our good. He was speaking to the disciples and he said, this is for your good that I leave. Now, how on earth can Jesus leaving be good? Because Jesus is going to send the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit that lives inside of all of us who believe in Jesus. Which means there's a whole lot of Jesus walking around here. There's a whole lot of Jesus sitting in these pews. There's a whole lot of Jesus watching us from home. That's a lot of Jesus, isn't it? Would you pray with me? Awesome God, we come before you today, humble servants, with ears open, minds open, ready to receive the lessons and the teachings that you have for us today. Help us to hear and to see how life imitates scripture and what is going on in this place. 
be with us here and may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. So today's gospel lesson from John is the beginning of a longer prayer from Jesus. And in this prayer, he starts by praying for himself. He knows that the end of his ministry is coming soon. And so he prays for himself and then he prays for his followers. His followers. His followers, if you notice in the scripture reading, included not just the disciples, but the women and the other people who traveled with Jesus. And I would assert to you today that that prayer also extends to us today. He wasn't just praying for those people present with him. He was praying for all of the followers that were still yet to come. He prayed for their protection. He prayed for unity. He prayed for joy. Joy. Doesn't that sound amazing? Not just God's protection, but the unity and the joy among believers. Can you imagine for, for just a minute what that might look like? You see, in the final verse, Jesus says, protect them in your name that you have given me so that they may be as one as we are one. Jesus prays that we will be united together as one, just as he and God the Father are united as one. Unity. Ah. Being of one mind. Wouldn't that be great? Have you ever worked with another person or a team of people or a group of people? Everybody has their own opinions, right? Have you ever worked in a group or a team situation where every person agreed on every decision that was being made at every step in the process? If you have, I want you to raise your hand, really seriously, raise your hand or comment on Facebook. Oh, we've got someone. That's amazing. I want to talk to you later and I want to learn from you. Because that is a very, very difficult thing to do. Especially when we come to talking about God and the church and the vision that God has for the church. I mean, let's face it, Roberts Park, we've been around for 201 years now. So... It might be safe to say we may be a little set in some of our ways after 201 years. But I don't think it always has to be that way. You see, we have the ability to do something, all of us, each and every one of us, to help move forward. And one of those things is putting aside our personal preferences for the good of the community and the kingdom and for the church. Now, I know that sounds a little shocking and it maybe sounds simple, but it is so hard to do, not just at church, but anywhere. So what do our personal preferences look like or sound like in church? It might be the type of music we sing. It might be our type of worship expression. It could be the type of flowers or ornaments or the way that we, we adorn the altar. It could be the liturgy, the Bible studies we offer, offer the missions we sponsor, the preaching styles, just to name a few. For example, off the top of my head right now, my, my personal preference might be that the choir stop wearing robes. My personal preference might be that the choir just wear, you know, black 
black pants and white shirt or a black dress or something like that and just dress in black and white. That would be my personal preference. I've given this no thought before right now, so don't take me seriously. Um, but that might be an example of one of my personal preferences, but yet everybody else in the choir and in the church might be saying, well, no, the pastors are wearing robes, the choir's sitting up there, it looks so neat and uniform. No, we want to keep that. Is that a personal preference? Or does it even really make a difference when it comes to sharing the love and the joy and the grace and the peace of God? I don't know. Now, there are definitely some things that are personal preferences that do have to do with God's will for this church. And so that's why it's so important to listen to the Holy Spirit. Because sometimes, I'll speak only for myself, sometimes I have a tendency, I'm going to look right into the camera here, sometimes I have a tendency to think that my personal preference is everybody else's personal preference. That everybody else likes the same thing I do. And um, sometimes I might even think that my personal preference, or I might perceive it as being the correct choice for the church. Sometimes I might be right. Sometimes I might be wrong. Thankfully, there's a group of leadership and people here who are praying and asking for wisdom and discernment over these situations. And I don't make these decisions <laughs> by myself. We make these as a community. Now, last week, Pastor Derek Weber talked about the Holy Spirit, the paraclete, and how it meant advocate. And then Jesus today goes on to call it the spirit of truth. And that's where it gets tricky, right? Because, again, I don't know about you. I'll just speak for myself. But sometimes I have to ask myself, is that my voice in my head? Or is that the Holy Spirit? Who's talking to me right now? Is this what I want? Or is this what God wants? Has anybody else been in that position? Has anybody else thought that before? Yeah. I think that's, I think that's a, pretty, a pretty common um, place to be for us. And it's good for us to wrestle with that. It's good for us to wrestle with it because one, it gives us more opportunity to spend time in conversation with God, right? And second of all, it gives us practice at learning how to discern what God's voice sounds like, what the Holy Spirit's voice sounds like compared to the world's voice, compared to our own voice voice. And I would submit to you that in Acts chapter 1 verse 8 that we heard today, it says, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And that part of the power we receive will be the ability to use discernment and wisdom to recognize God's voice, to figure out if it is God's leading that we're following or if we're just trying to advance our own personal agenda. Sometimes we need to learn to be, and this is especially true for me, we, learn to, we need to learn to be quiet and to listen and to listen to all the other voices that are with us. But most importantly, the Holy Spirit. Now, why am I getting stuck on this personal preferences thing, you might be wondering? And that's because of something Pastor Andrew said earlier and because of something that um, Pastor Derek talked about last week. He asked us this question, what are you hungry for? What are you hungry for? What need do you have? What, what hole do you have inside you that needs filled? What are you hungry for? That is an excellent question. Because when we start to figure out what we're hungry for, we might find out that other people are hungry for the same thing. 
but it's still asking us to focus on ourselves. And so that's why I want to take this moment this morning to say, as we're asking ourselves, what are we hungry for? That we take into consideration what other people are hungry for as well. I participated in a Bible study for years and very often, well, I'll say almost 99% of the time, we would choose a study and a lot of people would be happy with it. But there was always one person that was like, this study is not for me. Or they walk out of the church service and be like, I didn't get anything out of that sermon. And you know what? Sometimes that Bible study, sometimes that sermon, sometimes it wasn't for you. Sometimes it was for someone else that was here, that needed to hear those words, that needed to hear that encouragement. And so I think we need to keep that in mind when we ask ourselves what we're hungry for. What are other people hungry for? And how are other people being fed? Because the way they're being fed might be different than the way we're being fed. And so we have to look at all of these pieces and all of this diversity. Because we have some tough work ahead of us. Difficult choices that we need to make as we continue to flesh out this ministry of faith and food and designing programming and ministries that aren't going to just fill the stomach, but nourish people, body, mind, and soul. So let's continue to look at that reading from Acts because in verse 9, it records Jesus' ascension and it says the disciples just stood there looking up. Now the Bible said many times that we're a stiff-necked people. So you just kept watching and watching and watching their head getting farther and farther back. Use your holy imagination with me for just a minute. Close your eyes if you want and think about this. The disciples standing around. Jesus is rising up into the heavens. And they're looking and they're looking. And they're like, when's he coming back? Is he just going to hang out up there? Can you still see him? And then suddenly two men in white appear. And... Um, I can see them just going over and tapping one of them on the shoulder. Be going, hey. And everybody starts like, oh my gosh, where did you come from? And they're like, what are you doing? Like, what, what, well, Jesus was just here. And then, and then Jesus went up there. And, and, and we're just trying to see where he is. And these men in white are like, yeah, yeah, we know. We, we saw what happened. Now, stop it. <laughs> Let's break this up because you've got work to do. Jesus just gave you an assignment. You're here looking for someone who isn't here anymore. And so it is then at this point that the disciples make the Sabbath day's journey back to the now infamous upper room which has been the scene of so many exciting developments in Scripture. As a leadership and as a church, we aren't going to get very far if we're constantly looking up or, more appropriately for our times today, looking in the rearview mirror and looking behind us. It's always good to take a quick check back there see where we've been, how far we've gone, those things. But if you're driving down the road, how much time do you spend looking in the rearview mirror compared to how much time do you spend looking out the windshield in front of you? See, the windshield in front of us, that's where God is. That's where God is asking us to follow. Follow, come closer, come closer. Looking forward into the future to what's coming to ahead. You know, when I was in driver's ed, they taught us defensive driving. And they said, when you're driving, look everywhere. You know, look at the parking lots as you're passing them. Look for the people. Look for the cars. Look for everything and everyone. And we can only get that big perspective by looking outside of ourselves and out front and in the future and where we're going. 
And just using that rear view mirror is just a little, a little check, a little checkpoint, just to make sure we're, we're in making good progress. And you know, I know that it's tempting to look in the rear view mirror and that's where the good old days were, right? Before COVID, before other things. But that's in the past. That's the rear view mirror. The time is to look forward because God has bigger plans. God has bigger plans for us here at Roberts Park United Methodist Church. Do you know how I know? Do you know how I know? I know because God is here. I know because God showed up. God showed up here this morning. I know this because I see the Spirit working through you. I know this because I heard the Spirit in the choir this morning, whose anthem could not have been more appropriate for today. I see the spirit at work and the people who are volunteering. I see it in worship and wonder. I see it at soups on. God is here. The spirit is here. And the spirit is here to manifest itself in peace and joy so that we can share that peace and joy. So yes, the Spirit is at work right now. The Spirit is alive and well at Roberts Park. And with the power of God, the Spirit is primed and ready to manifest God's kingdom of love here and now. Now, once the disciples and the other followers, don't forget the women, I'm going to bring them up again, um, return to the upper room, it says they devoted themselves to prayer. I wonder what they were praying about. What do you think they were praying about? Please send Jesus back. The two guys in white said he'd come back the same way he came. Do you think that maybe they were praying about, well, maybe we should go back there like every day until he comes back. Or maybe they were praying about their own fears or anxiety. But I would like to think that they were praying about what are our next steps forward? What do we do now, because Jesus gave us this command that we're to take the gospel everywhere. Well, that means people that don't speak our language. That means people who don't look like us. That means people that don't worship like us and believe in different gods. That means the Gentiles. How on earth are we going to do that? I'd like to think that's what they were praying about. And even in the early church, they had, to, they had fights over personal preferences. One of the most famous being between Peter and Paul over circumcision. You know? That's a, that's a, that's a pretty, that's a, that's a, that's a big personal preference and very personal for half of our population. But it was a question of, what was God calling them to do? What was God asking them to do? And what was their idea? What did, was, was it their voice or the Holy Spirit's voice? Last week, uh, Pastor Derek led the leadership in this retreat and to help us start moving forward with this idea of faith and food. And at the conclusion, we were tasked with praying and letting these ideas start to effervesce, you know, like Alka-Seltzer, you know, let, let, it, let, let our ideas, our hopes, our dreams bubble to the surface. And tomorrow night's our board meeting when it'll be the first time where we all get together and we get to hear from everyone what bubbled up out of them and out of that retreat. And it is so exciting because how is God going to show up? Where is God going to show up and where is God going to call us to go? So I don't say this very often, but I am super excited for tomorrow night's board meeting. 
So just to finish up here, this is one of the rare occasions when I, you may have noticed or not, where I actually preached a three-point sermon. I didn't tell you that at the beginning because people get distracted with like, okay, when's she moving on to two and when's she going on to three? So I just want to review the three points real quick just to make sure you caught them all. First, let's try to be in unity with one another by putting aside our personal preferences and making our decisions based on the leading of the Holy Spirit and the greater good of the church and the community. That we will listen to the Holy Spirit because that's Jesus talking. You know, when we started Kaleidoscope, we didn't read a single book on how to start a queer ministry. Didn't read a single book, didn't watch any videos, but our tagline is by the community for the community. And just by listening to the community and following the voice of the Holy Spirit, we created something that is bigger than any of us ever imagined. That's what listening to the Spirit can do and moving with the Spirit. Number two, stop looking up. Or in our case, stop looking in the rear view mirror. Because if we keep looking back, we're never going to be able to move forward. So focus our, your eyes forward. Focus your eyes on our future and the new opportunities that are in front of us. And dream big. Because God is big and nothing is out of the realm of possibility when God is at our side. And finally, three Devote yourself in prayer for the church, for the leadership for tomorrow night. Pray where you might engage in these new ministries moving forward with faith and food. Bring your ideas. Let Pastor Andrew know. Let me know. Let somebody on the board know. But bring yourselves into the congregation and let us know where the Holy Spirit is. Is leading you. Amen. Would you stand, please? Easter people. God has gr done great things for you. Go now, carrying the story of God's work in your lives, that in all things, good and difficult, you can ask with confidence, how will God show up now? Knowing all the while that God will indeed take care of all of us and point us towards joy. Amen. Amen.